Hello, it is Saturday, July 22nd, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday puzzle today, so very possibly the toughest puzzle of the week. And in fact, I have heard it. I have heard it is. I was uh, glancing at the Daily Solve um, Discord chat server, and it seems as though a few people in there have had uh, a bit of a challenge. So we'll have to see how I fare with this one. It might be a tricky day. And this potentially tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by William Arundel, Adam and Annette Noble, Emma Smith, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They're bringing us this series and sustaining this channel. For that, I'm very appreciative. And if you'd like to uh, contribute directly to the channel, help it out in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There you can find those bonus videos, the most recent being yesterday's uh, New York Times mini puzzle speed solve, which has been uh, posted and had not my best times, but one extremely good time, one, one puzzle solved in the best time I can remember in recent memory. But other than that, uh, middling, I would say. In any case, those are up there for patrons. Thank you to everybody who's a patron at any level. I really do appreciate it. You can also join the Daily Self Discord chat server, which I mentioned a moment ago, in which people discuss the difficulty of these puzzles and other puzzles and other crosswords. And finally, there uh, it would be a big help if you'd subscribe to the channel on YouTube. So thanks to everybody who's done that and helped bring those subscriber numbers up slowly. So uh, having said all of those things, let's get on to today's puzzle, the Saturday crossword, a themeless crossword, the second of two of the week. Uh, this was constructed by Robert Logan, who's, uh, well, it's another second, a second puzzle for him in total. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get started and see what's in store for us today. Let's start solving here. Turnovers on a football field, maybe question mark. Why does that have a question mark? I don't know what that's getting at. Interesting grid. Lots of very long answers. So probably a relatively low total number of clues. I'm not the kind of person who typically pays attention to that. I know it's a big subject of discussion among crossword constructors and people who are very serious solvers. But um, I just noticed this is a, it's a fairly sparse grid in terms of the, the black cells. Anyway, let's keep going. Chicken soup and eucalyptus oil for two. I wonder if these are folk remedies. That does fit. That does fit. They're the sort of thing people say, you know, chicken soup, you it, it, have it when you're ill and it makes you feel better. And, you know, maybe it does, maybe it, maybe it doesn't, but uh, it's comforting. At least it's sort of a folk remedy. And eucalyptus oil, I'm less familiar with personally. I don't know that I've ever used it for anything, but it seems like it might be that kind of thing. Let's look at the crosses. Someone one, Something one can pay for free. Well, you can pay attention, you can pay, um, I don't know, there are all sorts of things one can pay. I'm trying to think what would fit in this space, and I can't. Subject of the 1987 Connecticut Compromise, not sure about that. Um, hmm. Make one, wed to make one, to unite to wed, could be. Kaiser's group. So I don't think this refers to Kaiser, the uh, the um, German leader, former German leader, but I think probably what it refers to is Kaiser. It's a health uh, care company in the United States, and there's something called an HMO, which is some sort of health care, private health care terminology in the U.S., and I don't exactly remember. It's come up a few times, and I've certainly heard it before, but I, I don't exactly remember what it stands for. Something or health management organization, if I had to guess, maybe. In any case, mind reading in brief. Well, it's not ES. So folk remedies is actually looking pretty good with these two. So if I saw this without the folk remedy cross, I would think ESP, mind reading in brief. But actually, you know what? It wouldn't be That wouldn't be likely because there'd be no need for a question mark there. That would simply be a straightforward answer to that question. So what in fact is this? Something punny, I'm not sure. Snorri's story. Oh, is that um, uh, Edda? The, the, uh, what is it exactly? It's one of the Norse um, kind of sagas. Uh, I, sh I, should know, I should know more about this than I do. But Edda, it just, the name looks like it would be 
part of that that mythology. I, I think this is the answer. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave it at that without embarrassing myself by going further out on a limb. Rings. Areola? Yeah, could be. Uh, or would that be Areole, A-E at the end? I think... Hmm. <laughs> what do I think? Let's look at the crosses. Heady stuff. Well, it could be ales. You, you, you pull an ale and that has a head of foam. But I wouldn't call ales stuff. I, if I were using stuff, I would say ale. I would say, ah, that's, that's quite a lot of ale. I wouldn't say the plural. So I actually think that's, I think that would be very poorly phrased if so. And I'm still not sure about areola. I might delete that. Military acronym first used in World War II. Snafu, maybe? That's a, that's a favorite. Well, has been a favorite of the, um, uh, of the New York Times crossword at times. So it's, uh, it's military terminology that, that has broadened out to, uh, usage in, in general, you know, sort of the general uh, population. So snafu, situation normal, all fouled up or something stronger than fouled. And I think that's probably the answer. That sounds about right to me, used in the Second World War. Like the leeward side, um, the leeward side. So the leeward side would be the side, what, protected from the wind? It would be like the leeward side, I don't know. Subject of the, of the 1787 Connecticut Compromise. Court in a courtyard, perhaps. Oh, serenade. You could, that's a very clever clue. So to court somebody, to woo them romantically. So it, what that means in this case is to sort of, you know, to woo somebody. I think in this case, it means maybe under their balcony or, or up to their window. So the, in the manner of Romeo and Romeo and Juliet, for instance, serenading Juliet. That, that's very clever. And I think that's probably the answer. Let's see. Does that help? Like still, this could still be Ariola or Ariola. I'm not, I'm just not confident about that being the, the answer, unfortunately, because of the pluralization thing. Maybe I'm just wrong about that entirely. Anyway, turnovers on a football field. Maybe this looks like wheels. What on earth is going on with this? And I do have to remember, it's not probably actually going to be about football because of this question mark, this pun indicator. Mind reading in brief. Oh, right. An EEG. Um, uh, a brain, you know, um, a, a readout of, of brain waves. Right. Okay. That's very clever. That's another cleverly phrased clue. So this really does look like wheels, doesn't it? So game with rolling and bluffing, or liar's dice, which I have played in a Chinatown bar in San Francisco many years ago. Um, I don't exactly remember how it works, but uh, it's very, very commonly played in, well, in Chinatown bars in San Francisco. <laughs> um, yeah, liar's dice. There we go. Okay. Rings. Uh, extreme challenges. Oh, double dog dares. Right. Okay. It's the kind of thing children issue to one another, double dog dares, which um, in the language of the playground, I suppose, does in fact make it a more, uh, a higher stakes challenge. All right. Subject of the 1787 Connecticut Compromise. It's sort of ridiculous that I can't think what, that I don't know what this is, but maybe I don't. Seneca? Ring. Oh, oh, maybe it is. Arenas, as in boxing arenas, boxing rings. That could be it. That kind of usage. Like archaeological finds, typically. Oh, no, it's not Seneca. What am I thinking about? It's the Senate, of course. Oh, goodness. Okay, that was embarrassing. Um, it'll be the U.S. Senate. It'll, it'll have been something about about the mechanisms of the, or the organization of the U.S. Senate. Okay. And the timing is completely logical for that. Like ar archaeological finds, typically, they're, they're dated. They're dated so that we can determine their, their age. Okay. And then heady stuff, suds, I guess? Do you call... I, I guess I've only really heard head being used to describe the foam of 
ale or beer, as I was guessing earlier. I, I mean, suds has foam as well. Um, but I just haven't used it described that way. Maybe that's what the pun is about. It's sort of, it's like a head of foam. Or maybe it can be used that way. I actually don't know. Um, in any case, it's clearly the answer, suds. So soap, suds, you know, generating foam. And then like the, oh, like the leeward side, safer. Okay, so I was on the right track before. I just didn't, didn't come up with a useful answer. The side on which you're protected from the wind would be the safer side. One's at the bar for a few drafts. Uh, ciders? You could, have, you could have a cider on draft at a bar, but I don't know if that's what this is looking for. Dryer detritus would be lint. Okay, so never mind. One's at the bar for a few drafts. Colliders? One's at the bar. Lawyers? Drafts could be sports, uh, sort of players who are looking to be drafted to a team. I don't know. National Security Advisor under Obama. Um, Susan, was it Susan Rice? I think that's, I think that's right. Blank hair. Some seals. Oh, seals were a, seals were a one of the categories in, uh, the New York Times word game connections. Was it yesterday or the day before? It's within the last two days. Um, um, which I'm solving every day on YouTube shorts, although sometimes it goes a little longer than, than shorts. I can generally get the wordle and the plus word under the 60 seconds required for YouTube shorts. I found connections sometimes goes over. Uh, in fact, one of them this week was seven minutes long. Um, hats originating in Ecuador, despite their name. Panamas. Right, so didn't not originating in Panama itself, but rather Ecuador. So still in, still in that region. Measure of inflation, um, the price something index. The uh, it's probably I for index. Blank hair. Hmm, I'm not sure. Inflated. And oh, here's one to the bar for a few drinks. Report on a match. I'm so accustomed to things in this puzzle being punny that I don't want to think about this as in a report on a game, a match, but there isn't a question mark, so it may well be that. What about this one? Periodic table number. Atomic weight? Yeah, that, that looks right. I still, still don't know what this one is. Blank hair. Yeah, I'm not sure. Some seals, and I still don't know that one either. 00101000141 abbreviation. That is the format of social security numbers in the United States. They have that three digit, two digit, four digit hyphenated format, um, which is a, a number that is associated with the social security system, but is used more broadly as a general kind of personal identification number. Uh, some seals, I still don't know what it is. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to be the animal, of course. It could be uh, a seal, meaning a sort of emblem or a seal that fastens something, that, that makes something airtight. Uh, I don't know what it is, though. Report on a match. If I looked at all these, I think I have. What about up here? I don't remember if I've looked up here. I haven't. Heroic piece of writing. Heroic piece of writing. I'm not sure. Wasn't in a her hurry. Ambled. Maybe this isn't folk remedies. Folk remedies. Home remedies. Could be, yeah. Okay. Could be that similar sort of a similar kind of uh, implication, but not quite the same. So if one wasn't in a hurry, one ambled along. Some new job requirements in jargon. Relos, relocations. Maybe you might have to uh, relocate for a new job. Long shot in sports. Oh, in basketball, this is a, a tree, which I think is a uh, sort of corruption of a three-pointer, um, a, a long shot. And then what are the tr oh, cartwheels? Turnovers on a football field, maybe. You're doing cartwheels on a football field, or I, I suppose. Why a football field in particular? <laughs> I'm not sure I quite understand that one. But I think it must be right. 
Anyway, heroic piece of writing. Why do I not see it? Use or use, actually. Something one can pay for free. Pay, oh, pay homage. You can pay homage to someone. So yes, one of the many, many words that can follow pay. Use. Big blows. Like the expensive stuff, often aged. So aged wine, cheese, you know, fine balsamic vinegar, that kind of thing. Musical unit. A key? I don't know why that would be a unit exactly. Uh, labs, labsinthe painter. So the, the absinthe, presumably. Degas. Must be Degas. I'm sure I've seen it. I can't remember off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Uh, what about this? Use. Oh, employ. Oh, right. Okay, so this isn't tree, it's tray. Sorry about that. Misremembered my basketball slang, unsurprisingly, to the regular viewers of this of this series. A heroic piece of writing. A couple. A hero, oh, heroic couplet. That is a that is a, a phrase I've used heard you well probably not have not personally used but have heard used to describe um, I suppose per particular heroic piece of writing a heroic couplet all right big blows gales of oh big blows of wind sure of course and then musical unit is a set um, oh I see musical unit right okay completely not along the lines I was thinking. This means, so a band could play a set at a live show. I see, okay, fair enough. All right, oh, measure of inflation. Maybe it's not referring to, I was thinking of the CPI, Consumer Price Index, but I don't think it's that. I think it's inflating a tire. It's uh, PSI pounds, pounds square inch is what is what that unit of measurement is. So that that's the measure of inflation. Okay, it's not referring to, you know, our sort of current inflationary economic environment. All right. Some seals, I'm still, not sure, I'm still not sure what that one is. Blank hair, oh, you could have an ingrown hair there. That's, that's, a, that's a phrase. And then hang gliders, one's at the bar for a few trucks. Very clever, again. So you could be holding the bar of a hang, hang glider and be catching a few drafts of wind to uh, you know, push yourself along and help keep yourself aloft. There we go, very good. Some seals are, oh, signets. You can have a, a signet ring, you know, a sort of signet ring seal. That, that's what that's referring to. So it, it, is a, it is a seal, sort of an emblem, that, that meaning. But you could also seal a letter with such a thing in wax. Inflated, uh, if one has an inflated ego, one is vain. That might be the, what we're looking for here. And glass for cerveza. Um, so this will, this will be a glass in Spanish. I don't think I actually know this word, unfortunately. I mean, it, it clearly is a cognate with the English word for vase for, as, a, as a vessel, which is probably itself also related. Um, it'll be vasa or vaso, presumably. I wish I knew it. Which, I, As with, uh, what was it? Oro for gold, which I was thinking, is that aura maybe feminine? But um, no, it wasn't. Uh, similarly, I'm not sure here. Fines and fast. Hustle, hustles up. I'm not sure. I, I'm not very certain about that. Find someone and fast. Find something and fast. You. I think of rustle up as being sort of find something quickly. I'm not sure. Report on a match. Some something someone oops it doesn't fit report on a match does that help I mean that yeah vaso would be very plausible and then finds in fast hustle something maybe it is that I don't that doesn't look familiar to me general starting point general starting point does it mean the starting point for a military officer sort of you start as a private or something. I'm not sure if that's what that's looking for. General starting point. I'm not sure. Feature of a work boot, a steel toe. That could be a very common feature of a work boot for safety reasons. Um, general starting point. Asset. I don't know why that would be the case. Richard Blank, longtime chief foreign correspondent for 46 Down. What's 46 Down? RCA spinoff, it says. I can see. 
um, I don't know, it could be CBS or NBC or something. Uh, I'm assuming I'm assuming it'll be a U.S. television network, um, but I don't know what it is. Like some cakes and games. Fad suffix. Uh, oops, mania. You could you could you know tulip mania. One of the one of the original uh, ones of those. Uh, let's see. That could be report on a match. Oh, oh, I see what it is. I met someone. It's referring to dating. You, you, you made a you made a romantic match. I met someone. You could say, with the implication being, you know, you, you, you're dating them now. Uh, general starting point. A cad- oh, a cadet. Okay, so maybe I was on the right track with, you know, where does a general begin? They begin as a, as a cadet, perhaps in military school, and then like some cakes and games, they're iced, iced, iced games. Do you say that? Do you say that in terms of? Winter sports, they're iced games, ca- iced cakes, iced games. Richard, oh, Richard Engel, I've sort of heard, so he's a re- re- uh, foreign correspondent. I've certainly seen Sue Grafton Memorial Award and others. Edgar's, those are the Edgar, named for Edgar Allan Poe. Those are awards for mystery writers, I believe. And Sue Grafton is a mystery writer. I think she wrote all of those letter for something awards. Um And then if you rang someone up on the phone, you dialed them. Subject of a museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, I have no idea about that one. Had a bit of a streak going there that I've I've dropped. Uh, Academic umbrella. Arts and sciences. Arts and letters. That could be the case. Uh, Sort of humanities broadly in a way. Subject of a museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Dolly. I don't know if that's the answer. RCA spinoff. Oh, maybe, okay, so maybe it's NBC. I think that would be the only television network option that would start with an N like that. Uh, Dr. Dre. Cheney, who is known as the man of a thousand faces. Lon Cheney, the actor. I've certainly encountered that nickname before. Mikhail Baryshnikov by birth. Um, I don't know. Was he... A Serb or something? I'm not. I'm not actually sure what he was by birth. This looks like. Oh no, never mind. Members of one's chosen family. So oh oh cho- oh chosen family. I see. Soul brother. Soul brother is plural. It says members. Right. So not not a member of one's family uh, by birth. Speaking of by birth, but uh, but rather. Um, the family you choose, the people you meet, friends. Okay, there we go. So Let, a Lithuanian maybe, it's Mikhail Voroshnikov. Would have been, would have been Soviets, so that makes sense. Um, that makes more sense than Serb, uh, certainly. Uh, places to find faults. Oh, epicenters of a, um, uh, you know, of a, uh, the epicenter of an, of an earthquake. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't think of the word for some reason. So a fault, you could have a fault line on which um, earthquakes are likely to occur. That does make the St. Petersburg um, subject likely to be Dolly. This doesn't look right, though. Surely that's... Oh, epicenter, sorry, ERS. And then come clean to bathe, to clean oneself. And then one who usually works in an evening shift... Uh, Closer arts and no. What about this red dot in the middle of the forehead? Bindi. Um, that the sort of customary red dot. Um, and then pan fried dishes serve to commemorate the miracle of the oil. Latkes, Jewish uh, cuisine. One who usually works. What is this? A hitter. I mean. Baseball games played in the evening? I don't really know. It seems a bit odd. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something incredibly obvious with this. Sorry, I'm just looking at the keys. Am I missing a possible option? Oh, a sitter. Right, as in a babysitter. Someone who watches children while the parents are having a night out. Nuts or bananas are oh bonkers. Right, so those are both phrases, refers to, you, you, as a, well, I mean, they're, they're obviously foods, but but... 
In this case, they're referring to phrases used to describe something as surprising or astonishing or, or flabbergasting. Okay, just a sec in text. B BRB, be right back. Just a, just a sec, give me a second. Parts of some contracts could be writers. So writers are kind of terms attached to a contract that are requirements that are being demanded by one of the parties. What goes to pot? Uh, soil, you put soil in a pot um, in which you plant something. And then paradise is bliss. So there we go. That was the Saturday crossword. I do think that was a tough one, um, certainly. I think I lucked out early on with home remedies. I mean, I was incorrect initially with my folk remedies suspicion, but certainly having remedies in there was was a big help. Um, there were some tough things in here. This 1787 Connecticut Compromise, its subject being the Senate, that was tough, I thought. Um, that's the kind of thing where if you know it, you just put it in immediately. But if you don't know it, it's... Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily immediately come to mind as a possibility. Um, Susan Rice was was useful for me to know. I mean, I would imagine, um, particularly if you don't have any kind of U.S. political context, that would be, I mean, you would just need all the crosses basically for that. Uh, what else? Vaso, fortunately, I had most of the crosses before I before I started. That's interesting. Glass for cerveza, so glass for a beer, a vaso. I should learn Spanish someday. Um what else? Oh, Richard Engel, another one. I needed most of the crosses for that, although I, the name, I did recognize the name eventually. And then uh, NBC. Yeah, similarly, you'd need, the, you'd need either the, to make an educated guess or you'd need that knowledge. You know, all sorts of things like that in here. Lotka's Bindi. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of Degas. Yeah, lo lots of actually specific bits of knowledge as opposed to just pure vocabulary. Um, PSI, atomic weight, SSN. Um, yeah, anyway, there we go. Uh, interesting crossword, tough one. Um, fortunately, I think I, I think I, I was, I, I lucked out in a few cases on this puzzle. So um, maybe went a little better for me than it could have. Um, I did not set aside uh, clues from yesterday's puzzle today because I do need to get on with uh, some other things. So I will do that. But I will be back tomorrow for the Sunday crossword, the long, long, extra large grid, the big Sunday jumbo crossword with a theme. So we'll return to themed solving and it shouldn't be as difficult as today's. It should be a roughly midweek difficulty, all things, all things considered. So join me for that on Sunday. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.